Hey, hey, it's Tom from Audio Ordeal, and today I'm going to be showing you something quite basic. So we have a reactor macro, and this is just an ADSR, and it's got a few extra little tweaks. So for example, here, the velocity actually controls how much the sustain works. So for example, if we have it here, and you hit the note very softly, that's the level of sustain. And then this is how much the note velocity will add values onto that. And what I was wanting to show you was converting this into just a core module to tidy it up. And also because Reactor Core is something most people don't really touch. And it's a really nice little intro to starting off in Reactor Core. I won't go into anything complex. In fact, what you see here is as complex as it gets. What we're going to do, we're just going to take all this maths and condense it into a core cell. So what we'll do, we'll rename this sustain maths. And that's it. And we can just go in, new input, new output. And there we have it. So what inputs do we need for this? Well, we've got a sustain knob, we've got the on velocity and dynamic sustain, right? So I'll just create two other inputs. I apologize, my computer's running a bit slow. I've got 10 videos rendering in a queue in the background. So sustain, dynamic velocity, and what was the other one? It was on velocity. So on velocity and dynamic sustain it was dynamic sustain now all we're actually going to do is copy this maths over and to do that i'm just going to take snipping tool and we're just going to make reactor a bit smaller and we're going to just fit this in here so we can see now the first thing to do connect sustain on velocity and dynamic s on here so we've got the sustain knob going in we've got our dynamic sustain this just controls how hard the dynamics change the sustain and then this is just a midi input on velocity now what we can do we can convert this maths into core maths which is really easy so built-in module math start off with a subtract so we do very simple, very similar to primary. We just do a new quick constant. So one, one, and sustain in. And you can see actually how core, it's a bit daunting to start with, but it's very much the same as primary with some lower level work. And for example, you have, instead of various oscillators, you've got things like this, you've got memory, scoped bus it operates a bit differently but you know for first impressions as you can see here it's more or less the same so on velocity connects there and then we multiply again by the dynamic sustain so let's just duplicate this connect this and connect this and finally we just add this maths back onto the sustain we can just connect it like this and here we go rename this s and we have very simple reactor core maths module and we can just compact it just brings everything tighter tidy it up a bit more you might be able to compact it again no we can't but that's fine and it means that instead of having all this stuff we can just replace all that, including like your constants here with this. Let it delete. It's taking a while and we can just have everything really tidy and we can have all our maths actually just within a core cell. And I find that a lot easier. I've only recently started doing it instead of having all the maths in primary, but it just means that you can take the math section out of primary and do all your uh, multi-sum things in core. 
And to be honest, like anything less than this, for example, if we just had a minus and a multiplication, I probably wouldn't do it. But as soon as you get to like four or more operations, then just combining it all in core is a really good way to do it. So there you go. It's a really simple core tutorial. It only really covers the basics and it doesn't allow you to do anything in addition to primary in this one function. But I think it's the best thing to do right now if you're starting out with React to Core. Play about with this, jump in, create new core modules and see what's in, especially like the library. You can see all sorts of cool stuff. For example, uh, here we have various things and just start adding them in, playing them in. Get used to the maths first, how everything connects. Um, one thing that's important to note is if you want to do, for example, audio in, you actually have to click on the input and change the, the input to audio, which we can't do right now because it's connected. If that was, you know, trying to send an event now, it would be a problem. And likewise, if it was connected out to an event, things would become problematic. So um, we have that. That's my tip. That's something I've started doing recently, just converting all the maths into core modules. And it also means we can duplicate this and we can just do the same with release. And we can quite easily, yeah, we can keep all of these. Um, dynamic release is the only one we need to change as well as the release knob. We get rid of them. Sorry, the rendering is really slowing down my computer. And it just is a case of now renaming all of these. Um, I see that delete removed the dynamic R. But yeah, it's a case of renaming all of these, adding in the knobs that you've accidentally deleted and just connecting it up. And then you can save this core cell as, and it can be a multi-purpose maths module um, and yeah, it, it's just another layer of convenience for you later down the line where you can have a core cell that's already been set up that can be used within other maths elements, can be combined with other things. And slowly but surely you'll build up a core library of your own things, combine it with things that's downloaded or already in the library, and you'll get better and better at core. But core is really complex and goes really deep. And I've not learned even half of it yet. So um, it's a great intro to it and how you learn is start off with the basics and then get practicing with the harder stuff. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that was helpful, quite a quick one, but keep playing around with it and enjoy.